while I keep reading up on the Delphi case and the Idaho 4 case, I keep coming across headlines like this and this. And we have other possibilities not being addressed in this Newsweek and Fox News article. And I gotta know right offhand, do you think what has been alleged in the Delphi case is absolute nonsense? Let me know down in the comments below. And I also want to know from you why all of a sudden Brian Kohlberger's internet search history has become such a big deal. And if an open conversation is something you would prefer, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the point. So let's talk about it. So of course the prosecution in the Delphi case this is going to make the statement how this is just a fantasy, a stretch. This is more for social media than the actual trial. What else would they say? It's the prosecution. It's not like they're going to get up there and openly state, well, yes, we knew about the Odin angle. Yeah, we had all this evidence right in front of us, but we just going to ignore it. And we didn't bring it up. We're disregarding it and we think it has no bearing. So we didn't look into it at all. They're not going to say that. They're going to do everything they can to acknowledge that this was never even a thing that came up on their screen. And even when you read the prosecution's response to this, where they go into how crazy these allegations are, they make the statement that the defense's memorandum is not 100% correct. Okay, it's not 100% correct. Is it 50% correct? Is it 75% correct? How correct is it? And then we have all these other content creators looking into this and immediately disregarding it because they're experts and they know everything. And I don't want to act like they don't. So just like I said in my last video covering this particular memorandum, you have to be open to the idea that if this Odin angle is legitimate, that the people who committed this act aren't well versed in the actual religion. Now from everything I read, and this is a fair point, from everything I read and saw, there is no history of this type of act being a ritual within that particular religion. But it does make references to where something like this has happened, but it usually involves animals. Now, it should not be a stretch of the imagination to think that somebody who is newly immersed in that religion, who wasn't very familiar with how the runes go or any type of ritual, partook in something and took it to the next level, took it to the next extreme. So for that to be completely disregarded, no ties to Odinism, no ties to any cult, no ties to any act is not 100% accurate. People need to account for the fact that this might be somebody who doesn't have all the knowledge in this particular religion, in this particular faith. And it should be, at the bare minimum, looked at a little deeper to have it verified. Yes, take the defense with a grain of salt. That's what anybody should do. But we should also be taking the prosecution's side of the case with a grain of salt as well. These are all just allegations. 100% allegations on both sides. Nothing has been proven yet. So for it to be disregarded is a bit absurd to me. We have to search all possible angles here since the defense brought it up to see if it's valid. And everybody who is on here making statements that the defense is making this up, I need you to understand, attorneys are not going to sit there and put their entire livelihood at risk for making up complete false statements. These accusations were based off actual police work done by actual investigators who were investigating the crime. So they didn't make it up. They didn't just pull something necessarily out of thin air, throw it in an oven to bake out a story. They have statements. They have eyewitness statements. They have people taking polygraphs. So let's not sit here high and mighty and constantly assume that one side's always right and the other side's always wrong. It should have no place in our judicial system to be this biased. That man is still innocent. I don't care if you agree with it or disagree with it. 
He is still innocent. You don't have to like it. He's innocent. Deal with it. And as far as this Brian Kohlberger stuff goes with his internet search history, how is this a headline now? How is this new news? Oh, it's an unsealed document. Now we know that they searched his internet history to see if he, he went to Amazon or Walmart or one of these other online stores and purchased this particular knife that we're assuming he allegedly used. I'm pretty sure half the world assumed they had already done that. And to really get on there and start publishing a story saying his internet history could prove valuable evidence, okay, we well should also acknowledge the possibility that his internet search history won't prove anything. It won't show anything. The names that they used have been redacted, and a lot of the information's been redacted. So to pretend as if this is some big breakthrough and investigative technique used here, never used before, is absolutely absurd. Of course they would have pulled his search history. They have no weapon. To go along with the complete lack of other DNA evidence that they don't have. So they're going to need something way more than cell phone pings and a little micro touch on a sheath that they can't necessarily determine how it got there. Okay, DNA can be pulled in all types of directions. They need more. Of course they're going to search for this. I don't understand how this is such a headline. I don't understand how this is such a big deal. And I don't know how or why so many people on here are saying, yup, they found something in his internet search history, in his Amazon purchase history. We don't know what they found. They may have found nothing. Everything that they did find may be nothing at all. It may be another reach as far as a lot of us are concerned here. It has to be acknowledged for one person to do this is odd. And for such a little DNA to be left behind is odd. Okay, yes, you're saying he's a criminology student, PhD, he knows all the ins and outs, so why would he use his own computer? Why would he use his own cell phone? Why would he use an account that can any way, shape, or form be tied back to him? Doesn't make any sense to me how y'all can say on one hand, he planned all this, he studied for this, he prepared for this, but he made such stupid errors like a cell phone being left on, internet search history to his own device, touching sheets. So he is either the smartest person in the room and, and planned every step of this, or he's not. It's a valid statement to say that this whole headline about his internet search history is quite possibly a whole lot of nothing. And that needs to be acknowledged as a possibility. We don't know what they found. We don't know how they did the search to derive that came from him. We don't know about usernames. We don't know about, it was it his IP address or was it an IP address at WSU? We have no clue. So other than that, I don't want to hold you up. I just saw these things and I'm kind of getting tired of seeing them as one-sided as they are. I would like to see more of an open conversation on this. I would like to see more of a dialogue on this. If you agree with me, let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here. Y'all stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.